We will check a scripture from the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. Chapter 21, verse of 33. I'll ask that you highlight it for our reading. To the hearing of the people. It says, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it. He dug a wine press in it and built a watchtower just to protect it. Then he rented the vineyard. He rented his farm to some farmers. And the owner went on a journey. So he has a farm, gave it to some farmers, and he went on a journey. Now this is why I came here. When harvest time approves. Someone say harvest time. Harvest time. The author of No Resort makes sure that you don't enjoy at harvest time. When harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruits. The tenants seized the servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned the other. The man sent some people to go and bring his results at harvest time. The enemies killed them. Let's go. Then he sent another servant more than the first time. They did them the same way. Last one, he sent his own son. And he said, perhaps when I send my own son, they shall respect my son and give me my results at my harvest time. Let's see what happened to the son. But when the tenants, the enemy, saw the son, they said to each other, this is the guy who is going to get the inheritance. Let's kill him so that we can take the man's inheritance. The author of no results takes away your inheritance. Yes, so they took him. Threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to the tenants? Help me to give the title of my sermon and say, My neighbor. My neighbor. Whoever. Whoever. Wants you to die. Wants you to die. At your harvest time. At your harvest time. We are coming after them. We are coming after them. The altar. The altar. Of no resource. Of no resource. You may be seated. Life is about give and take. The root cause of life is only when you give, you get it out. According to Newton's third law of motion, it says to every action, there's equal and opposite what? Reaction. Anything you put inside, you get it back. When you go to school, you put in energy to learn. After learning, you get a certificate. You take the certificate to get into a workplace and they pay you back based on what you did. Life is about give and take. You put in your effort into anything. You invest money, you've got to get the returns. You get time to take care of your children. Your plan is to make sure that the children grow up to come and take care of you. There's an African proverb that says, the person who helped you to let your teeth grow, you also help them for their tears to go, to go away. Life is about give and take. Assignment as a man of God is to put you into you the word of God so that you shall bear good fruits. Amen. But however, it's very unfortunate and very painful. That's not how life becomes. People see no results. They have done their best, but no results. You are hard working, but no results. You bought the land 10 years now. You can't start the foundation. No results. You started the foundation. Lentil time. No results. You, can, you cannot continue. And the question right now is that what happened? The person will tell you, the moment I started, I lost my job. It's called the agenda of no results. Is there anybody here who is going through the altar of no results? It has fought you. You've written every application. Your resume, your CV looks so good. Like the girl that was testifying. But no results. In your field, you are so good. You are very, very experienced. But yes, still no results. What will you do? When you have done all you could, but yes, still there is no results. You can sing, but no producer, no results. 
You can do nice hair, you can't get a saloon to work. You can shave hair, but no barbering shop. The altar of no resource. The way you cook, everybody clap your hands for you. But when are you going to begin the restaurant? It's called the altar of no resource. Look at the way you take care of a man when you date a man. But no results. It's not the intention of anybody in life to see no results. Look at the number of people you know. One of them can just take your hand and take you to Flagstaff House and you can get a job. But the issue is no results. You call them, they tell you, I'll call you back. Five months, they have put your number on don't pick. Or do not disturb. It's called the altar of no results. Some numbers come on your feet. You've written on it, uh, don't pick. When you see that one, don't pick one, don't pick two, don't pick three. It's the altar of no results. When it is moving in a person's life, it's that altar that is controlling you. It finds a way to take away your joy, your happiness, your excitement, and where you need to be in life. Every now and then, you can begin, but you don't see the end of it. I come to show you some signs of altar of no results and the causes of the altar of no results. We're going through our test, and the Bible speaks about a man who has his own farm and just got somebody and said, young man, farmers, come and take care of it for me. When harvest time comes, I will come and take my fruit because I'm the owner and you will take some. When the harvest time came, the man sent the servant. But the guys who were taking over killed. That is how the altar of no result worked. It makes sure you don't enjoy at your harvest time. In life, everybody has a harvest time. But my question is, are you enjoying at your harvest time? Many people, at their harvest time, they fall sick. At their harvest time, you can't throw to them so. We put a lie on them, and now they are in the courtroom every day. Some people too, in their harvest time, they get accidents and they die. Your harvest time, you are supposed to enjoy of the fruits you have put on the ground. Now, there's an issue. But for this man, his harvest time, the same people he was working with, who he supported and helped, now the same people killed everybody connected to him. This is called the witchcraft of no results. When it comes, it makes sure that whoever can help you at the harvest time are no more there. Today, I stand on the altar of the testimony city. Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, by the power of God, whatever is trying to kill you, whatever is trying to destroy you, Jesus. whatever is trying to fight you in your season of your harvest time, Jesus. I speak by authority. Yes, I speak by power. Jesus. I speak by grace. Yes, I disconnect in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God honor you and favor you. Amen. At your harvest time, Amen. may God preserve you. Amen. At your harvest time, Amen. may your heavens be open. Amen. At your harvest time, yes, Lord. Say, Oh God, Oh God, let my heavens, let my heavens be open. Be open. At my harvest time, at my harvest time. Sit down for a minute. Sit for a minute. In the harvest time, in the harvest time, in the harvest time, when you grow something at the harvest time, it's when you're supposed to enjoy. But hear me, those of you here that know into agriculture or everybody you study agriculture somewhere in primary school or JSS, you know that grasshoppers and locusts and all the parasites that affect plants, they don't attack them when they are young. At harvest time, the grasshoppers show up. Grasshoppers are the enemies of the harvest time. Any enemy at your harvest time. Jesus. Any demonic grasshopper. My God. I said any satanic grasshopper. Jesus. Psalm 78 verse 46 says something on there. And look at it right now. Psalm 78 verse 46. Look at it right now. It says, He gave their crops to grasshoppers. Their produce to locusts. Who has given your crops and your harvest time to grasshoppers? Grasshoppers, when they come, when they see the fruit, they come and eat all. But grasshopper, I have a question for you. Why didn't you eat the fruit when it was young? But you ate the fruit when the fruit became big. 
so the enemy of no resource comes at you at your pinnacle of your success it's called the attack of almost there mm. almost there you are not there but you are almost there grasshoppers they show up in the person's life and hear me the bible says once upon a time jesus christ gets to a place he sees a fig tree he says i will eat the fig fruits he jumped he jumped he jumped he jumped he checked he couldn't see it the bible says there were leaves on the fig but there were no fruits but according to the culture of the fig tree when there are leaves they've got to be fruits so when jesus saw the leaves he was happy i'm going to eat but the leaves were there but the fruit were not there it is called the spirit of deception many people are here you have the leaves but no fruits people see you they are so excited because the leaves are all around you but there is no fruit inside of you no resource then jesus said hey this tree this tree this tree i've located you you came to deceive me you've given fruit you, you've given leaves but there are no fruits then i curse this tree Amen. jesus was cursing the spirit of no resource the bible says there and then the tree wedded dried up from the roots the bible says if we believe in jesus greater things will we do so if jesus could speak for a tree to die oh my god then any tree of no resource jesus ah. that tree was an altar so by the same power by the same grace oh my god i move to your life jesus any tree oh my god bearing no fruits jesus any no resource oh any altar jesus of no resource oh let the altar cut fire Amen. let the altar die Amen. by the strength of god jesus by the power of god yes Lord. in the name of jesus Amen. it will not happen again Amen. for you to have leaves with no fruits right. let the spirit jesus let the power let the grace jesus. of the lord in the house jesus remember your life Amen. i speak jesus on every side yes lord of your life my God. marital life jesus employment yes lord social my God. education jesus christian life yes lord financial life jesus that is not bearing fruit my God. i cut it off Amen. now i start a new one jesus let all of them work for you Amen. in the shadow of no resource my God. in the power of no resource jesus i reject it now Amen. let god arise yes, Lord. you shall get results Amen. i say you shall get results Amen. say i will get results i will get results sit down for a minute when the spirit of no resource is fighting you some people might think you are lazy that's right and bro you are not lazy and they still think you are lazy because they don't see the results it's very frustrating when you do your best but there is no results what will you do mm. jesus christ before he called one guy called peter peter had worked all night to catch fish he couldn't catch any jesus got there he said how far bro you got some catch yet he said we worked all night long right. but we couldn't catch any and Peter is an experienced fisherman. He has PhD in fishing. That's right. And he knows that in the night you can get fish. He knows the locations. He said, we have tried all, but no fish. Most of you, you have tried all, you've not caught any fish. And Jesus Christ said, try one more time. If Jesus can say, try one more time, then it definitely means... When I get no resource somewhere, there's another resource somewhere. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I said, when Jesus says, try one more time, then it means although I got no resource, there is another resource that is coming. Listen, you try many times, nothing happened. That's right. But in the name of Jesus, Jesus, 
there is another resource coming. Amen. Try one more time. Yes, Lord. There is another resource showing up. Amen. The Bible says, sit down for a minute. The Bible says he land the net into the deep. The Bible says when he was bringing the net out, he couldn't hold it. He called his partners and said, I'm catching something. It's too heavy. Come and help me. When he couldn't catch any, the partner saw it. He caught money, many. He called them to come. The Lord says, the people who have been standing idle, looking at you for a long time, because of no resource, they are about to celebrate with you. Amen. They are about to clap your hands for you. Amen. Is there anybody here that knows that God is about to cause people to celebrate them? Yes. If you are the one, lift up your voice and shout, I am the one. I am the one. Shout it again. Say, I am the one. I am the one. Say, I, I am, am the one. The one. Say it again. Say, I, I am, am the one. The one. Sit for a minute. Listen. He tried all night. Some of you, your case is not all night. Your case is all your life. You have tried all night long, but you have not caught any fish. In your life, how many fish have you been able to get? Have you caught fish before? And most of you are looking at me smiling. You think I'm talking about fish. I'm talking about what belongs to you. Your fish. You have tried, but there's no fish coming for you. But in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Somebody listen to me. Elbow your neighbor by you. Elbow your neighbor. Elbow your neighbor. Just an elbow your neighbor. Elbow your neighbor. And say, my neighbor. My neighbor. I'm going to catch fish. I'm going to catch fish. And we are going together. And we are going together. When I catch. When I catch. You also catch. You also catch. When I pick it. When I pick it. You are picking it. You are picking it. From today. From today. No more. No more. No resource. No resource. Amen. Listen, listen. A king by the name of Jehoshaphat, he built a big ship. And the ship he built is in the Bible, 22 48, first kings. He built a big ship, and the, and the job of the fish was one of the ship was to go and bring him gold. But because no resource was fighting him, look at what happened. Now Jehoshaphat built a fleet of trading ships. To go to offer for gold, but they never moved because they got disaster at Ezion Geba. He built a ship. Let's say this is a ship to go and bring gold, but the ship couldn't move down because the day he built the ship, when the ship wanted to move, it broke down. No resource. I want to ask you what ship in your life has collapsed? I said, what ship in your life has collapsed? Ask your neighbor for me. Help me. What ship Ask your neighbor for me. in Ask your for life me. has collapsed? Ask for me again. What ship in your life has collapsed? Ask again. What ship in your life has collapsed? Now, do you know, do you know that Solomon had ships? It went to the same place by his own. Because he broke the altar of no results, his ship was bringing gold. Yeah, First Kings 9, 26, the, um, the, the version I wanted, the, the TLB. Amen. That's the person there to help me, if he's there. Read it for me. Now it says, King Solomon had a shipyard in where? Ezion Giba. Where is Ezion Giba? Ezion Giba is where Jehoshaphat's ship broke down. Oh. So let's say, let's say, let's say, um, this place, this location is called Ezion Giba. So Jehoshaphat, he built a ship. When it got to Ezion Giba, the ship couldn't move. It collapsed. But Solomon also built a ship. It started at Ezion Giba, but his own couldn't break down. His own was moving to bring gold. Now, let's see the gold Solomon's ship brought. Where he built a fleet of ships, King Hiram 
supplied experienced sailors to accompany Solomon's crew. They used to sail back and forth from where? Offer. Oh. Bringing gold to King Solomon, the total value of it was several millions of dollars. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. His gold brought several, he said, brought gold worth millions of dollars. It's in the Bible. But somebody's shape couldn't move. But somebody's shape brought millions of dollars. The same place and the same location. So two people can begin life. Another can go far. Another can stay there for a long time. Today, I came to meet you at Ezion Giba. Jesus. I said, I came to meet you at Ezion Giba. My God. If you have been kept at Ezion Giba, I'm coming after you. Amen. I said, if you are, uh, you are stuck, Jesus. sit down for one minute. The host of ship ended at Ezion Giba. That's right. But for Solomon, his ship continued That's right. and brought the gold. Ezion Giba, it was a shipyard where ships are located. So somebody's ship is moving at Ezion Giba. Somebody cannot move. You started primary school with somebody. They have brought the millions of dollars. Your own shipwreck. The word shipwreck simply means the ship had the disaster. Ezion Giba. Now the word Ezion Geba is, is from the Hebrew word divided into two. The word Geba there means a man. Say a man. A man. Human being a man. And Ezion means backbone. So Ezion Geba simply means the backbone of a man. So the attack the ship went through was from another human being. So for you to get no results in life, sometimes they plant a wrong person around you to bring you down. My God. Any human being, Jesus, any as young giver, my God, any human being with backbone, Jesus, blocking your ship from moving, my God. From today, I came to unload some ships. Amen. I said, I came to move some ships. Amen. Let your ship move right now. Amen. Say, my ship is moving. My ship is moving. Say, my ship is moving. My ship is moving. Say, my ship is moving. My ship is moving. Somebody out there, say, Brother Daniel. What kind of ship are you talking about? What ship? And somebody say, Prophet Daniel, I've not been to Tamahabo before. What ship are you talking about? Your relationship is moving. Amen. Your partnership is moving. Amen. Your companionship is moving. Amen. Your fellowship is moving. Amen. Your friendship is moving. Amen. Your financial ship is moving. Amen. Your marital ship is moving. Amen. Any ship around you. Jesus. It is moving from today Amen. your ship is moving Amen. it will never break down Amen. say my ship is broken my ship is moving say my ship is moving my ship is moving it will never break it will never break my god exion geba the man built a nice ship it never moved. It never moved. It couldn't get resources. In my last three minutes, I want to give you some things here. It's so, it's so heavy. Prophet Daniel, what are some of the signs of no resources? Can I tell you? Yes. Can I tell you? You don't see the fruit of your labor. No matter how hard you try in life, you are not happy. You seem to always be starting everything all over again. It's very difficult for people to clap their hands for you. If all your lives, people have never congratulated you more than three times, the author of no results is fighting you. You put in all your energy and effort, but don't get the benefit of the results. Someone else come to enjoy what you have toiled for. You work very hard, but nothing to show forth. You use years to build something, but another come to enjoy Someone else come to, comes a short time, but they benefit from what you have sweat for. You work very hard, but people think you are lazy because there's no results. The shadow of almost there is tormenting you. Those you started with always seem to go ahead of you. Whilst it's like you are always at the old place. You have worked in a place for a long time. 
When things started moving, all of a sudden, you left the place or they sacked you or they removed you or there was a change of regime, change of government. I can only talk about this in Africa. When you work somewhere, no change of government can take you away from where you used to be. Except those sensitive, sensitive appointments. That one year, you go from Trump, Trump government to Biden government. You work from the beginning. And when things started moving, another came to enjoy it. You are not there to enjoy what you started. And this one is the serious one. You die before you reap the results. You die before you reap the results. Put your hand on your head. Nobody here will die before they reap their results. Amen. I said nobody here will die before they reap their results. Amen. Nobody here will die before they reap their results. Amen. This is the next one. Sickness comes so that you don't enjoy what you started. You use all your money and you get nothing. And, and this one is a serious one. After you have supported someone to arrive, they forget about you thinking you are not on their level. Now, what are the causes of it? And I'll end there. Spiritual attack of witchcraft. When the witchcraft can attack you. In the course of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and next Sunday, I'll be going very, very deeper into it. Wrong advice. Wrong people. Because a wrong person can torment you. Let's say this is your place of resource. This is your place of resource. Let's say this basket is the place of the resource of this particular uh, pastor. So pastor is standing here all his life been working so very hard to get to his place of resource. So every day God, and God is pushing him, he's getting there. Just before he gets there, he gets a bad friend. Let's say I'm the bad friend. I convince him. Don't, don't try. Go, go. So although he's close to his resource, I advise him, wrong person, I move him away. The moment I move him, another person comes. Enjoys the resource of what he has suffered for. It's called the altar of no results. Thank you. My so listen God. to me. It's a serious altar. Wrong people. Any wrong person. Jesus. Who is moving you away. My God. From your place of results. Jesus. Away. <laughs> Let me give you just two. This one. Um, uh, first of all, that's where I preach from. Change of location. Sometimes when you change location. The same person came to move you away. You are no more there. Location is very powerful. I'm not preaching on it today. I think Wednesday I will get them to preach on location. First service, that's what I preach on. Location is very serious. Do you know that when Jesus Christ was born and gold was coming, those who were bringing the gold, they were looking for where Jesus Christ was located, the wise men. If they had not found Jesus Christ at the location, another person would have taken the gold from them. Location is very serious. Everybody, you meet your destiny helper at a place. That's right. And it, it's, it's called a place called there. You meet, you meet somebody at there. And my question is, where is your there? And I'm giving you this last one. When you give up easily, you give up easily. Another person comes to take the results. And sometimes breaking, breaking down with sickness. That one too can take away the results of people away. Today, Jesus. I just want to speak to somebody. I'm done. What is the kind of no resource that has been fighting you? Look at you. You are very hard working. Very, very hard working. Let me do this. Now. You are very, very hard working. But you can't show anything. And some people think you are lazy. Tell somebody, I'm not lazy. I'm not lazy. Tell somebody, I'm not lazy. I'm not lazy. Say, I'm never lazy. I'm never lazy. Then, 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 then ask the same person who told you I'm never lazy. Now, now, then why? Say, then why? Then why? Now, this is the answer. No resource altar. But today, no resource altar is about to become more resource altar. Amen. Those who are shouting, I said, Amen. no resource altar is about to become more resource but the count of three, you're about to shout more results. One, let's go. More results. Number two. More results. And hear me, by the third time, come and enjoy the more results from this altar. You come and tap the altar with your photo again. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Second service, I declare by grace, by, by authority, God. let there be more resource. Amen. Let there be more resource. Amen. Number three, more resource. Lift up your right hand. In the name of Jesus. Brother Robert Roy, didn't need it or not. Hey, what's your son? I No results. No results. Mataki apahataya. Listen. Look at the amount of money you have invested in some things. If all those investments had gone through by now, you would have been a multi-millionaire. Do I have a witness over here? Look at the money you have invested in things. Until we now see cash him. Until where you put your money inside. But later, they tell you stories. I'm done be on your feet. We're about to lift up one serious prayer continuously. In the name of Jesus. Last Wednesday, we're all here. We saw a beautiful lady. After dating for six years, the guy said, my pastor told me you are not the one. So if I'm not the one, why didn't your pastor show you that I was not the one from six months? Am I saying the truth? No resource makes you to start all over again. Because this one doesn't work, you have to start another one again. And your life is being delayed. Lift up your hands. Listen to me. Tuesday, Wednesday, and coming Sunday, don't miss. Don't, don't, don't miss. Because I will get them to pray into it. And I'll get them to pray for people on that side. In the name of Jesus. We are dealing with 12 altars. And I think after the six weeks, I'll be able to do only five. I was supposed to have done six in the six weeks. But there's no, no results. I have to use two weeks. You can solo them. If no resource is broken, sister, you smile again. Oh. Say, 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 hey, no resource. No resource. Listen to me. You are talking to the altar. So you uh, command the altar. Say, altar. Altar. Of no resource. Of no resource. Hear my voice. Hear my, my voice. voice. Whether you come from my mother's family, whether, whether you, you come, come from, from my mother's, mother's family, family, or my father's family, or, my father's family, or, outside, or outside, or outside, or whoever, or whoever is in charge, is in charge of that particular altar, of that particular altar. You the altar, you the altar. Hear my voice. Hear my voice. I speak to you. I speak to you. I break. I break. Your source. Your source. Your power. Your power. Your, power. your influence. Your influence. Hey. Hey. No resource. No resource. Be broken. Be broken. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, No resource. No resource. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I will see resource. I will see resource. Jesus name. Say I will see resource. I will see resource. And a woman walked to me on Tuesday. She said something to me. She said, Prophet, I've been with this man. We have married. We have children. We have married for more than 50 years. I said, good. So the man has left America to come and live in Ghana because he started a big business. But the day he landed in Ghana, he came to the house. The next day he said he's coming back. He didn't come back. I've heard that the man has got another house somewhere. Another woman is inside. My God. And me and my children, with the school fees, he doesn't want to pay. Can you believe? No resource. Say, hey! Hey! Say, no resource! No, no resource! Jesus. And, and look at the number of people who have worked so hard. When enjoyment came, they fell sick. Or they died. That's right. Say, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. No resource altar. No, no resource, resource altar. altar. Crash away. Crash, Crash away. away. Say, no resource altar. No, no resource, resource altar. altar. Follow me. Follow, Follow me. me. Break. Break. A brother walked in here. He was in the first service. He completed university, I think, in 206. No work. He has applied everywhere. No work. He came to see me. I look at the brother. I said, ah, your ID card at university, it has been contaminated. I said, if you can, if you can, if you, you can locate me your ID number, it will help me. He said, prophet, I still there. I said, good. He brought it. I said, write your ID number. The, the, the brother, the slim brother, uh, the slim brother, write your ID number. Student ID in a white handkerchief for me. 
He brought communion drink. I said, put it in the communion drink as the blood of Jesus. I said, leave it to me. I said, now wherever you have applied for again, don't apply again. I'm giving you one man. Come and tell me testimony. He was there. Kulibu called him. No, no, he has applied for a long time, and they were looking for somebody to do research. They said, ah, we'll be looking for you to do the research. And right now, you're about to start the work. You are not going to start from the low. You are going to become the head of that department. That's right. Life. Imagine. So this one will categorically tell you that it was a spiritual matter of his battle. I said, your ID card will be tinted so good, so somebody puts a liver on it. We're about to pray. This is one prayer. Hey, no resource is very painful. That's right. Somebody hear me? I, I, I wrote it down. One of the effects of no resource. It can make you become jealous by default. Let me explain. You, do, you are a good person. You are not a jealous person. But if every day your friend is progressing, sir, some way, somehow, you end up being jealous by default. You didn't plan to be jealous, oh, but by default, don't you want to be jealous? Don't be so holy on me, is the truth. That's right. I said, I said, don't be so holy on me. It's true. Some of you, you are, you are jealous low-key. It's called low-key jealous. Because that's your best friend. But every day, she says good things. And I met this one, he bought this one for me. So you're not about pest, man. It's called low-key default jealous. Because you, your own is no resource. You have been praying with your friend that uh, comes and says, the guy has come going to marry me to America. Yeah, you'll be happy, but you sit down and say, ah. am I saying the truth? Yeah. It's the effect of no resource. So half of people who are jealous, it's not their fault too. It is no resource. If they are getting results and you are getting results, would they be jealous of you? That one is only envy. Lift up your hands. Say, say, say low-key jealousy. Low-key low key jealousy. jealousy. Because of no resource. Because, because of no resource. resource. Say no resource. Say no resource. You have made me, you have made made me. me. jealous for a long time. Jealous for a long time. But from today, but but from from today, today I know you. I know you. Go. 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 I speak to that altar. I speak to that altar. Catch fire. Catch fire. Now. Now. Somebody pray your only prayer today. Pray. Now this prayer, move about and pray. Move about and go and pick your resource. Move about as you're moving, you're picking your resource in the spiritual realm. Let's flow. Move about. Yo 
लेके डाला बाला बा लेके डाला बा लेके डाला बा लेके बाबा बाबा लेके बाबा लेके बाबा बा लेके बाबा बाया बा लेके बाबा बाबा बा लेके बाबा बा लेके बाबा बा लेके बाया बाबा Resource is when the result comes, but the person is no more there. Mm. Either they are sick, they have removed them, or they have died. That's right. Say whatever will try to remove me. Whatever will try, try to remove me. me. Say whatever. Whatever will try to remove me. Will try to remove me. Say any any power. Any power of the remover. Of the remover. Listen, there's a scripture in Psalm Psalm 36, verse 11 or something. It talks about remove. Look for it for me. It's called the power of the satanic remover. Check for me Psalm 36. But check the verse for me. Remove. Perfect. V perfect. It says, let not the foot of the pride come against me. I don't, I don't like that one. Then this is what I like. Let not the hand of the wicked do hurt. So sometimes too, your resource is coming. But the hand of the wicked can remove you. Say any remover. Any, any remover. remover. Say any remover. Any, any remover. Whether you are false prophet. Whether you are false prophet. Babalao. Babalao. Juju. 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 Malam. Malam. My friend. My friend. Witch. Witch. Wizard. Wizard. Family member. Family member. Outsider. Outsider. That wants to remove me. That wants to remove me. Hey! hey! I rather remove you. I rather remove you. Jesus name. Say hey! Hey! hey. Any remover? Any hey, remover? I'll remove you! i remove you! From today, you shall remove the remover. Hey, I man. say you shall remove the remover. Hey, hey. Say any remover. Any remover. I'll remove you. I'll remove you. Say any remover. Any remover. I'll remove you. I'll remove you. Say any remover. Any remover. I'll remove you. I'll remove you. Say any remover. Hey, remover. You can't remove me. You can't remove me. By fire. Say you can't remove me. You can't remove me. Say nothing can remove me. Nothing can remove me. By fire. By fire. I declare in the name of Jesus. My God. Last week, a sister sent a test message. From the time she was young, any time she's sleeping, somebody will come and sleep with her. The person who can give me that test. The person will come and sleep with her. Not only that, the person makes sure that is married to this lady. We did a prophetic direction for people to bring. Uh, I give people t shirt. Do you remember? She went to wear the t shirt. Man of God, read it for me. She went to read the t shirt. Papa, please. You want to wear the t-shirt? Let's go. Let's be off. Let's go. Papa, Let's go. please. I have a testimony about the white t-shirt. Yes. Since I was a teenager, uh -huh. till even this year. Look at it. When I received the t-shirt, mm -hmm. a strange person with the face of a woman. You see? And sometimes a man comes to sleep it with me. He came with the face of the woman or a man to come and sleep with her. In my dreams. And it sometimes... Continue. Even if I want to do it in a dream, she said, if, if she wants to sleep with the person, the person rejects me. The person will say, No, I won't sleep with you. So the person appeared to me in a dream last month ending. Now the person came again in the dream, showing me her face. Now for the first time, the that first person time. showed the face to the lady and telling me she misses me so and, much. And says, I miss you. And she wants to sleep with me. Uh huh. But she can't. It's a female relative. Uh huh. Then I asked her, who is it? To, to my utmost dismay, I was to abagast when she told me. I said, who is it? I was taking her back. I said, who is it? She, the sister is here because it's a sensitive matter. I can't point her. Who is it? It's a prophet. 
my own mother. Life. Can we imagine? So she came now life in a dream and said, today I want to remove my face. I've been coming to you always. I said, who again? He said, prophet, my own mother. Now she told me, prophet, now I understand why my mother has never liked me in my life. He said, the mother is, I've been fighting. She didn't understand. Let's touch your edges. One prophetic direction. I gave people t-shirt and that was it. Say by power. By power. Oh, hey. 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 Remove her. Remove her. Go away. Go, Go away. away. On the last Sundays of every month, the evening, 5.30 p.m. service, the communion and healing. Don't miss it. The miracles God has been writing in this service, these services are very powerful. But I want us to dedicate that night only for praise and um, it will be a worship and communion, then healings will take place. Because people have been healed. Somebody just text message, last, just last night, somebody before she can bleed, before her blood can come out, blood transfusion or medication. After prayer on Tuesday, let's go very quick. Just like that. Let's flow, man of God. Hello, Prophet Daniel. Uh -huh. I thank God for your life. Yes. And the works God is doing through you. Yeah. I have a testimony to share. Mm -hmm. I have been diagnosed of PCOS. PCOS. Since last year. Yeah. And this means for me to have a normal monthly flow, mm. I need to be on medication. Can you imagine? And sometimes infusions. Yeah. Which is very traumatizing. Jesus. For a young lady like me. Wow. Who hasn't given birth yet. <sighs> I've been expecting my monthly flow for more than 20 days now. She's taking medication, but still 20 days, it has not come. My God. And I told God that this month, mm. I don't want to go to the hospital or not take any medication. Mm -hmm. I'm only trusting him. Yeah. You asked us to put our hands on our belly on Tuesday. Tuesday? Before. Listen to me. I've always told you people, if you come here waiting for Prophet Daniel to call you to prophesy to you, ask for prophecy, I can prophesy. But it might not get to your turn. Right. Number two, we are plenty. I come up to the 500 people. But when the direction comes in the atmosphere like that, run and catch some. That's right. It's a spiritual direction. On Tuesday, I told people to put their hands on their belly. That's right. And I didn't know that she, she was supposed to get that miracle. Look at it. You asked us to put our hands on our belly on Tuesday for healing. Uh -huh. And I placed it on my abdomen. You. And to the glory of God, mm -hmm. it is in. The blood has flowed. My God. Continue. And I just want to thank God for this. And I believe that I'm totally healed. Yeah. Amen. Every month, medication plus infusion. Is uh, uh, is, are they here? Wow. She's your daughter. Come, 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 come. Come. Yeah, her picture is there. I think you can play the picture. Put the picture there. Yeah, mama, speak. Yeah. It's my daughter. That's your cousin. So, know yeah, I know about it. She came to see our gynae doctor and she was put on IV for five days. So the message was not coming. She has been taking medication throughout. So not coming. So I was home. That was Wednesday. And she was up me. That's last year. Me men sa bow. She had quite sorry. Papa can say fine, sir. And two years yes, me and bomb pie. Me yeah, I'm much now. Me men sa bow. My God. Why we close from church? And she said, Ma, and I said, what has happened? I said, God has done something serious. I'm feeling something in my tummy. And I said, when we go home, let me see it. As soon as we reach home, he said, Ma, I'm feeling pain in my abdomen. And I said, maybe the thing won't to come. That's what I said. And in the dawn, and she called me, she says, it has happened. I you. said, thank God. So I came from the bed. And I lie down in the floor. I roll that this is the beginning of my life. And this is all things that what has happened before. My gynae doctor was even saying that I should give birth early or else she can't give birth. Wow. So I imagine. <laughs> you know, God has come true. And I think this woman, okay, so you and your daughter, and, and you said you said you live very you live somewhere, you live in Takwadi because of this child that you came. Why won't God do it? Why won't God do it? Came all the way from Takrade. And I think on, on Wednesday after the service, I said, man of God, please, I want to see you because 
I will be here till after, 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 after I will see you before I leave. Mommy, your time has come. Amen. Amen.